to your viewer, and welcome back to Lunar Nebula Art with me, Jelanon. So, today we're going to do a little bit of photo bashing. I have uh, moved my pixel layer with our gesture. I decreased the opacity, so it would be a little easier to see everything underneath. Similarly, I have also done a thing where I got the Ephraim photo. I have duplicated it. I've got the original underneath here, if we ever want to look at it. But this one, we are going to edit. Yoink. Let's see, where is my smart selection brush? I'm going to select all this stuff. All the white stuff. Then we're going to erase it out. This would be faster on uh, the computer, but that's okay. Yeah, it's a little confusing when you're also seeing Ella Wood underneath. So maybe I'll we'll turn off Ella Wood. We'll do that. Okay. So we're going to do all of this, and I'll have to be careful with the erasing, it looks like, at that spear tip. Okay. Mm, let's erase all this part. And it looks like, yeah, we've got a pretty clear thing. Uh, I don't think I want to keep that pennant for the spear. Might be a little more careful over here. Yeah. Basically, we're just trying to keep Ephraim's body around, so then we can put Elwood's head on top. And then I might move around a little bit of Ephraim's arm, so we get a better spear position for our gesture. Okay. So we got that. Okay. That's working. All right, so there we go. Now we don't have quite as much of that white background. That's nice. I'm going to deselect everything by clicking that X on the bottom left. And then we can figure out... All right, Ephraim. I'm going to give you a facelift. Okay. Let's get rid of that. And yeah, if you continue to erase, and then you're like, oh, I erased something by accident. You can undo, of course, but I generally like doing erasing in steps because of that. So, got that. Let's try to decrease that some more. Okay. All right. Then we'll try to get Ella Wood back here. And then we'll resize this to better match Ella Wood. Okay. We got something like that. Hmm. Yeah, and we're going to try to maneuver that spear. Hmm. Might be easier in Affinity Photo. Hmm. Let's use our smart selection, I think. I have a lasso. I thought I had the lasso too. Ah, there you are. Freehand selection. So let's do this. Mode, new, or add. Let's do add for now. Okay. Do that. And then... I don't think we need to worry about the shoulder armor. Oop. Got my wrist there. I didn't place down enough of my palm, I think, for it to realize. Mm -hmm. We're just going to finish that. And then we can continue to add. Okay. Uh, we'll add these pennants, why not? And then we can maneuver that a bit. And I should have just Ephraim selected, I think. Yeah, there we go. Alright. So we want something closer to this. Okay. So that gives us a little bit better of an idea of what we're going to be doing. I think. Yeah. Ooh, and I have to admit, I like that shield more than I thought. Hmm. Okay, it's an idea. Well, I also realized I'm going to erase Ephraim's little cape. By little, I mean it is magnificent. Okay. So we're getting the stuff we want, and we'll get rid of the stuff we don't want. And from there, 
we should have a better idea of what our character may look like by the end. Let's see, let's let Elwood shine through a little bit here. I think I was erasing a little bit too much of that arm. Okay. Yeah. I think we like the look of that. Let's get rid of some of that whole white. Okay. So yeah. That's a little bit of photo bashing there. Hmm. And then we can add something else if we so desire like Ike's boots <laughs> hmm I don't know though these are growing on me maybe that's just because it's less work to not move more boots on there just like Dimitri's metal boots hmm I guess at that point they're sabatons okay but Hector's armor though that rims is close enough, I think, that I'm not going to bother moving Hector's armor on. So, the boots. Do we care? Honestly, I'm liking the look of that as I zoom out. You want a gesture to be pretty easy to read from far away. You also want the colors to be like that. Clearly, this is not our final color palette, but something to consider. So yeah, I'm liking the look of this so far. So I think we're happy there. So I think it's time to move on to hair. And the question is, do we want Ella Wood's hair or somebody else's? Because I think this Ephraim's hair might actually be more of what we're looking for. Hmm. Maybe we'll do both. Regardless. And I do like Ella Wood's hair, though. So we'll start with that. Alright, so for this, let's add a new vector layer. And we'll scooch that above the head. We'll go back into our vector persona, or designer persona. This is the pixel persona. This is the designer persona. I'm going to put up my little Apple Pencil. And we are actually going to start, I think, with triangles. Because if we go with just strokes, if you don't make an angle with the stroke, it's hard to get that harder tip. So I think we're going to start here. We've got this nice sharp tip to the end. We can angle that triangle a bit. Alright. I mean, another option is to just use the pen tool and make a little angle at the bottom. Okay. And we are, of course, going to change this color. Actually, let's move it closer to here. Okay. Where do we want that strand? Right about there? Yeah. Okay, and I think for now we're not going to put any of that stroke around it, really. Here. But we are going to change its color. Now we go to our handy dandy color palette, click that new color in there. You can see, okay, yeah, doesn't look too saturated or anything. I don't like that. Hmm. Yeah, and then we'll just kind of keep doing this for a bit. I will try to come back with, you know, a little bit of a faster version of this. You know what? And I think actually using the pen tool might be faster in the long run here. So, we're going to get rid of that. Start up our pen tool. So, let's see. Start from here. It went for my wrist again. I'll just make these points. Any of these little hairs out here, I'm not going to worry about. There we go. I'm just going to go for the big shapes. All right. Hmm. Yeah, I will do the front shock of hair first. Let's go 
think over here. Because we're kind of wanting to think in layers a bit. And I think this will be a better top layer. We'll have to adjust these nodes later. But we can do a little bit of that now by tapping and holding. And then dragging to adjust. And that one we might have to redo entirely. We'll see. Okay, so now let's get stroke color. Actually, we don't even worry about that. Let's get the fill color set. There we go. So now we have a fill, and we'll call this curve front bangs. And the way this hair is looking, it looks like the source point of the hair is basically over here. That's the source point of the hair, so that's where we want all the hair to go towards, regardless of what we do with it later. So I'm going to write source point here. Source point of hair. Of here. Yeah, that works. <laughs> Alright, now to consider, our little avatar has a swoosh in the hair. Where did I put your little avatar? You're somewhere in here. There you are. So a little swoosh in the hair going this away. We might want to do that with this. And I think what we're going to do is make this longer. So it looks more like a swoosh. And we'll kind of have these add to the swoosh. In fact, we may even delete that. Delete that node. So it looks more like this is accompanying the swoosh. This isn't Nike, but the swoosh is important. To me, anyway. this node. There we go. So as you can see, we kind of got rid of that loop-the-loop -loop by placing two points outside of it and then getting rid of the loop. Yeah.
source point pretty well. And I may be paying too much attention to that source point. But for now, we're going to go for it. So that's looking good for the flats of the hair. So next we'll try to add some highlights and things to it. All right, so we've got the base flats for our hair. Now let's make a nice little pixel layer, I think. Uh, let's start with the bangs. So we'll make that pixel layer Pull it down so it's clipped to the bangs. I'm gonna go into here. Then let's start with shadows. And just to make sure. Hmm. It doesn't seem to like what I'm doing. But of course that's also because we're not in our clipped layer. Foolishness. Okay. <laughs> so, that is done. Alright, let's add Elwood back in here. And maybe what we want to do is actually turn off the visibility so we can kind of see what we're going to be doing. Okay, so this will be our first layer. Let's turn down this. So this is not our darkest shadow, right? just gonna do this for now. I believe this is a normal, yeah, it's a normal opacity. Uh, we could make it multiply. Let's make it multiply. Okay. So I'll make this a little bit. Blink, blink, blink. All right. How's that looking? <laughs> Not great, but we can smudge it and stuff later. Okay. And actually, I guess the real question is, do we like the multiply versus the normal? Hmm. I think we'll actually go with normal for now. Okay. Hmm. All right, then. This is close to the head, so we're going to make that part darker. Similar idea here. Do that. And we'll erase right there. Smaller eraser. Okay. Back to the brush. Hmm. Let's make it even a little bit smaller. We'll do that. For this one. Make it even smaller. Try to make it look like this is behind that front part. That'll do for now, I think. Okay. For this strand. Look at Elwood's hair. Mostly bright white, but that's a thing. Okay. So we'll do a little bit darker on this edge. And 
then it'll have a bright contrasting light against it. Okay. going to add these shadows and maybe we'll erase some of them later or just add the lights on there let's see okay we could do something like that I'm not putting enough of my wrist on here for it to register everything as my wrist. Usually it's pretty good about it, but I've got it in a different configuration than I'd like for my hand. So it's registering everything. edge and we can maybe clean that up with our eraser maybe and of course you could do this with vectors as well I'm just thinking this might save some time okay so for now we've got some shadows and we can think about these Gonna go with our darker shadows now. Let's go collect them. So that was our first shadow. Here's our darkest shadows of the hair. So these will appear where basically hairs most closely overlap and where they hang over each other. Okay, so in this case, let's make even a little bit smaller of a brush, I think. There's that one. edge to this strand. I'm just thinking angle of the face and direction of light. So direction of light, I believe, is something I like this. Okay. We'll do that. Alright. Don't want to overdo this darkest portion. So I've got to remember not to. Now 
Okay. And then later on we're going to try to add some reflected or ambient light as well into those shadows. Try to make it pop a little bit. Alright, so I think I'll just show this process for the bangs here. And then I will try to speed up for the rest. Get all that. Should be good. Alright. Let's do the highlights now. I am by no means an expert. This is as much a trial for me as anything else. Just to learn how to do all this. We got our first highlight. So let's make this a little bit bigger of a brush so we can be more confident in our strokes. Try something like that. Okay. Okay, now that one is going to stay dark in the back, I want this one to be pretty bright. So we're going to try not to overdo the shadow too much, something like that. And that's why I'm not using the force pressure right now, is I don't put too much pressure into these. We could use a stabilizer right now, I'm using you no know, stabilizer. But stabilizers just help you make straighter lines and things. Which probably would help me, honestly. Only chose that, but because we've got this color over here, it's easier to select now. I guess we'll keep it like that. You, on the other hand, we are going to try to get a nice big section of this. Close that on. And hopefully we can just fill that. There we go. And you can change those attributes in that flood fill tool to better fill. But for now, since we've got the paintbrush selected, we'll just brush it out. Okay. Yeah, we can smudge these edges and stuff later. I'm going to add a few little of these. Let's see. I'm going to change the flow. Do something like this. Hmm. Hmm. I'm trying to think. 
What do we want to do? Yeah, let's do this. And since we're going towards this source point over here, I need to rearrange that. There we go. That's something to think about. Oh, yeah. And now it's looking like that. Alright, we're going to activate our source point. And now I'm going to go back and select our brightest color. Oh. So, I may have overdone it with our other highlights. Nice thing is we can just go back and fix that. So, with that in mind, let's do a little bit here. <laughs> and of course, it got my wrist again. There we go. All right. source point now. All right. So decrease this. This will mostly be the highest highlight. Should be one of our top hairs. That makes some sense. I registered my finger there when I was trying to do that. I think we can do a little bit of highlights in here. Let's get that source point back up. Hmm. Don't know why it's not undoing. Let's see. So we can go back to our history. Okay. I think that'll do it. Got my wrist again? Okay. <laughs> I'll actually erase that one. Okay. Where else do we want the hottest highlight? I think we want one kind of from here to here. The real question is... Nope. Not what I want. Okay. I was hoping I could do like Procreate where you can Hold one finger down and shift it everywhere. Let's get that. Okie dokie. And let's increase the size. I do not have the steadiest hands. Smudge that later. Put a little bit more of a highlight here as well. Hmm. 
Yeah, we'll do that. All right then. So we can do all that, and then I'm gonna try to smudge these a bit. Let's decrease the strength. Let's see what we can do here. We want it to look like it's kind of fading at the edges. Alright, let's increase the flow. Pulling that towards the normal midtone. the size. This is looking, so I'll basically just keep continuing doing this for a while, and we'll come back. Alright, so here's the current result of that pixel art layer. It looks a little bit better. I used the smudge tool a lot, and I think it ended up blending a lot better with that. And it, I did like it better using my finger than the Apple Pencil. As you've seen, I don't put too much pressure into using the Apple Pencil, and that's probably why. That's what it looks like before, and then ta-da. So yeah, that's one way to do it. I want to try to do a vector art version and show that off. To do that, I'm going to do something similar to what I did for the face in terms of shading and all that. So I'm going to turn off that pixel layer like that. Then we're going to add a new vector layer. Put that above the pixel layer for now. That way it's clipped correctly to the bangs. I'm now going to make that a little bit lighter so that we can see all these nice little highlights and shadows underneath. And what we're gonna do is something similar. Except we're going to choose shapes. So I think we'll actually go with triangles because that'll probably be the best way to do it. Other than just a stroke, but yeah, I think I like the triangle sharpness better. With the pen tool, you really need to make an angle to get the sharp edge. So yeah, we'll do that. I'm gonna go ahead and do this for now. And then for you, let's select this. Oop. And then we'll get rid of that stroke. All right. And then, you know what, let's actually just duplicate this now. In this triangle, we will make the darkest shade of hair. Okay, add that triangle by accident. Give me that move tool. There we go. So, alright, we can do something like this so that we can see it a little bit. Okay. Hmm. You know, we might even just leave them out like this. So, let's duplicate. Make it a lot skinnier and smaller and all that. Okay. I think we'll try to do a point like that. Let's turn those triangles off. And then we'll move this one underneath there. So we know this is shade one. We're gonna make that a thing. And then, okay. So now we can't really see it as well, but we know what shade it is. So that'll help us manipulate it, even with the opacity down. One more benefit of organizing a lot. Let's go ahead and convert this to curves. Then our node tool can really work on it. Hmm. Something like this. 
Yeah. Okay. We'll do that. And then... Alright. Now if we want to see this in a better way, turn up the opacity again. So you can see that it's pretty sharp. If you're okay with it looking sharp and cell shaded, that is fine. Alternatively though, let's just get rid of that. Something like that. And we'll pull this one in. Okay. And because we have that clipping mask, we are good. Apparently, this is small enough, it doesn't want me to move it. There we go. Alright, so we've done that, now we can use a Gaussian Blur. And that should make it very, very much softer looking. There we go. So if we really want to kind of minimize any differences between this one and the original Ellie Wood, this is probably the best way to do it. It'll take some time. But now, we can just duplicate these triangles and adjust them as necessary. Especially since, once again, we can turn down the opacity. And maneuver these triangles as desired. Let's see. So yeah, I will do this and come back to show you the final product with the vector arc. Alright, dear viewers, so... Here's where our flats were. Now, here's our raster highlights on the bangs. Now, I think I overdid it, honestly. I should have been a little more subtle. <laughs> Especially with our first highlight. That big streak down that major bang on the right side. But here are the vector highlights. And honestly, I think I like the look of them better. They did take a lot longer to do, though. So what I did was first I started with the shadows. And these were the lighter shadows, so they're not as dark. Then I copied that group, and I deleted all of the ones I didn't think I'd need, and I just kept the darker shadows in places where that made sense. Honestly, I might actually extend this one now that I'm looking at it. Yoink. Yoink. And we'll move it over here. Yeah. We'll join that one a little bit. Okay. So, yes, that's what I did, basically. And then I also copied the shadows and then just converted them. You can convert an entire group. So we'll look at these highlights over here. And we will turn them into shadows. Dun, dun, dun. So you could see that. So it's pretty easy to turn an entire group to exactly what you want. And then, you know, all that. It probably took around two hours in total. Uh, the majority of that was probably just that first step of getting the original shadows where I wanted them, and then, you know, just fine-tuning and adjusting after that. But I do like the look of it. It just took a while. We've got that Gaussian blur on there. I'll try to do this background of the hair uh, off-camera, I think. Leave a comment below to let me know if you appreciate seeing everything in the future. For now, I'm going to just uh, not show that. I think that'll prevent you all from spending too much time watching this video, and I think we've already covered everything I'm going to do technique-wise on that. So yeah, leave a like if you've enjoyed this episode of Lunar Nebula Art. Here we are, dear viewer. I've done some work on the hair, so let's take a look at it. So right now, we've got the bangs and stuff, and the background stuff. Let's turn off the wood in the background, and we can see this. So, with the front bangs, we're looking at the raster highlights right now. And frankly, I think I probably put a little too much into the highlight areas. And what I should probably do is smooth those out more like the back of the hair that's behind the ear right there. I like the subtlety of that more. Uh, that is a pixel layer. I have not done a vector version of that yet. 
but I like how that's looking. So I may just keep it. Whereas the vector highlights, I think I like the overall feel of the vector highlights better, but they take a lot longer to do. And honestly, we may or may not continue with them. We'll see, we'll see. So I will do the vector highlights of the back of the hair off screen. And we'll come back into another episode, I think. Yes. Also, you may notice I changed the chin a bit. I changed the shadows to reflect more like Elwood's shadows. So they're a little bit lighter in color. And then, yeah. Other than that, I think we're pretty happy with how things are looking. I made the gradient like this, kind of based off of some of Mark Brunette's information from his channel. He focuses more on video game design building a portfolio for that. And so he's pretty good to listen to. Uh, he does usually have, I would say, a female character that he's working on. So yeah. Anyway, this is the gradient I used. First the rectangle, and then above it, kind of this ellipse. And that's a little bit opaque in the background, so then the rectangle gradient will shine through a little bit. So there's a little bit of that. That should separate this hair a little better from the background to let there be a little bit of a lighter gray there. So yeah, that's the current idea. Oh, and I also realized the source point of the hair was more in the middle on Elowood, so I moved that over. Yep. <laughs> okay, so here is the hair with just the pixel layer and the vector on the front, of course. Now we take away that, and here's the vector layer. And then if I put the pixel in there, we have a little bit more stuff, but what I decided to do was make it less obvious with the highlights and everything in the back with the vector version by decreasing the opacity of these layers. Another thing I realized was uh, once I had the bang set up, I could literally just copy and paste or duplicate and then drag and drop those things into here. So I place them all, and then as I finished each set of highlights and shadows, I marked them as done. And then if I needed to delete some, I did that. And then if I decided to make multiples, like down here, for the shadows, I did that. So I like the subtlety of this, that means it pulls more attention to the front of the head. And actually I might even make uh, them more transparent on the bangs as well. And then to get rid of part of this line, I just made a little triangle with no stroke, same color as the hair, and bam. Get rid of that line where you want it to be. Leave a like if you've enjoyed this video, dear viewer. Subscribe to see more of Lunar Nebula Art, art videos. Comment below on what kind of Fire Emblem character class you think you would be. Would you be a knight, a lord, you know, cavalier, any of those. Any of those. And have a great day.